Would you like to play city skylines without running out of money? Are you frustrated because your cities get choked with traffic? Hi, I'm Lee, and in this episode of More Money, Less Traffic, I'll show you how building parks turns green space into gold, so long as we have educated sims to enjoy them. In part four, we covered the basics of education, levels, and land value, and why education is absolutely critical to our city's economic growth. We'll continue that conversation as we see how building our first park boosts land value and the building levels around it, and how it all falls apart without education. Next, we'll complete our discussion on The Sims life cycle as we introduce the very last city service they will ever need, death care. Finally, our city almost doubled in population in our last episode, and with more room to grow, we should see it double again in this one. All this influx means growing pains. We need more service capacity to keep our city functioning smoothly. By the way, if you enjoy my videos, please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe and click the notification bell. So let's get busy on those service shortages. At this point, every day puts more money in our bank balance, so let's keep the clock running. To start, our sims need water, so let's add another water tower across from the first at Smith and Seventh to expand capacity. Next, our garbage processing has reached its maximum. Since we have two recycling centers right now running at 150%, it's like we're paying for three recycling centers but only getting the capacity of two and a half. Building a third one will allow us to get ahead of demand and reduce our budget. Well, let's keep it with the other polluting industries over here around Broadway and Market, and then lower our garbage budget to 120% to save money. Before we head to the park, we need to build another elementary school since our first ones run out of room. Let's put it over here at 11th and Baker. Now that we've tackled our most immediate problems, let's open our land value info view to see if anything's changed since the beginning of part four. Back then, our city had an average land value of 12 credits per square meter. We've more than doubled our city's land area and still managed to increase land value by about 50%. Not bad. So what drove the increase? No doubt the new elementary school we just added made some difference. In part four, we also built a high school and a public library near four other city service buildings in the center of town. And what you know, the land around them has the highest value. While both of these buildings contribute to increased land value downtown, one of them is special, and why will become clear after we've built up our park. Before we get to that though, let's see if any more of our city's buildings have leveled up. So far, our levels info view shows that none of our commercial buildings have changed and only a handful of residential buildings have improved to level two. Most of our industrial buildings remain at level one, though all the buildings in the North Market District have somehow made it to level three. How did that happen? Well, remember how we designated North Market as forestry specialization? It's indicated by the pine tree icon below the district name. Specialized industries can't level up, so they always start out with a full bar at level three. Since we're on the subject of districts, remember how we created three of them? The boundaries we set allow us to see land value across our city in greater detail. When we click on the name of a district, like North Market, it tells us the average land value for the district in the top right corner, which in this case is two credits per square meter. If we click on Meridian Park, land value is still extremely low due to it having ground as well as noise pollution. Our commercial district along Main and Park Avenues downtown though has significant noise pollution, but also fantastic land value at 24 credits per square meter. While most of this is because of proximity to city services, it also reminds us of how not all zone types are affected the same way by factors like noise pollution. Commercial zones in particular enjoy it when it means plenty of customers. Now let's start on our park. We left these two triangles here at Park Avenue and Broadway unzoned so we could build a gorgeous green centerpiece for our city that we'll call the Bowtie. We could use a few of the base game square vanilla parks here, but that would be so vanilla. The base game for PC also includes the asset editor, which allows us to build parks that will fit inside odd shaped spaces like the Bowtie. It isn't easy to use, but it does work. Thankfully, Colossal Order rescued us from this method with the Park Life DLC in 2018 which offers better results, more variety, and makes projects like the bow tie easier than, well, tying a bow tie. We'll start out by clicking on districts and areas and selecting the Paint Park Area tool. We'll then paint a park on the two triangles along Park Avenue and Broadway between Main Avenue and 12th Street. I usually just follow the streets to get a nice crisp boundary since it doesn't hurt anything for the park area to spill over a bit. Be sure to change the name from the default. Now click on Parks and Plazas and select the City Park tab. Now that we've defined a park area, the next thing we need is a main gate. Let's go with the small one and place it on Broadway across from 9th Street. This starts our new park off at level one. Click OK and select the park side gate. We'll place a few of these strategically near intersections and connect them up with park paths so Sims will have a few shortcuts through the park. 
Then we'll place a park plaza in each triangle to push the entertainment level up over the threshold to reach level two. I'll explain what that means in a bit. Now we just wait for enough Sims to visit and the bow tie will level up, which will make more park buildings available as well as higher ticket rates. Parks are more than just pretty to look at. They add a number of benefits to our city. I'll come back to those when the bow tie reaches level two. Since our last milestone introduced a new city service, the Sims are just uh, dying for us to provide. You see, baby Sims are born as children, where they hopefully begin their journey through our city's educational system. Children progress to become teens and then enter the workforce either as a young adult or as an adult, depending on whether they attend a university like we discussed in part four. Adults are considered prime working age, and at least one of the adults in each household will get a job to make a living. Eventually our city's adults reach retirement age and become seniors. Seniors may not work for a living, but they still spend money in commercial zones and use city services. The last city service Sims use is death care. When a Sim passes away, cemeteries will send out a hearse to pick up the body and bring it to the cemetery for burial. When all the seniors in a household die and get taken away, then the home becomes available for other Sims to live in. And while Sims often die at home, they can also die while shopping or visiting the park. If a hearse doesn't arrive in time to pick up a dead body and the Sim died in his own building, then it will become abandoned. In order to avoid this outcome right now, we need to build a cemetery. Cemeteries don't really create a lot of traffic, but they do increase land values nearby and don't create any noise. So I usually like to place them out of the way in quiet residential neighborhoods. Let's create some space for a cemetery now by extending our plan area a little more to the south. This means we'll have to click on areas in the bottom left corner to buy an adjacent city square. Now extend 5th Street, one 12 unit block beyond Mill Street to Well Street. Extend Well Street west from 4th Street to 9th Street, and then extend Water Street, Mill Street, 6th, 7th, and 9th Streets, and Main Avenue to complete the grid. Finally, extend pipes below 5th, 7th, and 9th Streets to supply water. Give me a moment to set up street names and stop signs. <laughs> Just kidding, we don't have enough streets this time. Now, let's plop our cemetery on a Well Street between 4th and 5th and zone the block next to it residential. Once our sims move in and spread the electricity, we'll zone the other five blocks residential too. One bummer about cemeteries is that they fill up, so we either have to build more or empty them into crematoriums, which won't be available until we reach the big city milestone at 15,000 sims. This won't be a problem for us very soon, but it will happen pretty fast, since sims live out their entire simulated lifetimes in only about six game years. Our park should be close to level two. So let's move on from pushing daisies and back to planting them. When we click on the name of the bow tie, the game tells us a few things about the park's overall function. On the left, it tells us the attractiveness of the park, which we'll cover in a later episode about tourism. On the bottom is a slider that allows us to adjust ticket rates for the bow tie, along with noting its income and expenses. The slider can be set as low as zero to create a free park like the pre-made ones, and defaults to half of the maximum allowed ticket rate. Higher level parks are allowed to charge higher ticket rates. On the right is a bar indicating the park's current level and the amount of visitors and entertainment the park has accumulated so far, followed by the numbers required to get to the next level. Every time a sim steps into one of the park's gates, that sim pays the price set by the park's ticket slider, and each visit counts towards the park's total visitors. Sims will walk through the gates not just to spend time in the park, but also as a shortcut to get to the other side. So building paths that shorten the sims walks through the neighborhood like we did at 9th and 11th streets, encourages them to visit the park, allowing the park to level up faster and the city to make extra money if it wants to. While parks built with the Park Life DLC must have main gates, we don't have to build side gates at every entrance to allow Sims in. However, Sims only count toward total visitors and ticket income when they enter through a gate. Once a park reaches level five, nothing we do will make it drop down to a lower level. So if we wanted the park to be free, we could eliminate all the side gates. But everything we build inside a park, including the gates, counts towards something else that has a huge effect on land value around the park, entertainment. Before I dive into that, it looks like our city is short on electricity. We're not ready to build another power plant yet, so let's just increase our budget to compensate temporarily. If we go back to parks and plazas, we see that every pre-made park lists not only how much pollution and noise pollution it creates, but also how much entertainment it supplies. The same is true for unique buildings, landmarks, and all buildings that come with the Park Life DLC. While there's no reason we couldn't build a unique building or a pre-made park with entertainment value inside a Park Life area, it won't count towards the park leveling up. Only Park Life buildings will. 
The cool thing though is that we can mix and match buildings and props from various park life tabs once they're unlocked. So we could build a ferris wheel from the amusement park tab, or a giraffe enclosure from the zoo tab inside a city park for some creative flair. While buildings are the easiest way to boost a park area's entertainment, the progression isn't linear when we build more than one of the same building. When we do the math, our gates and plazas should add up to at least 275, but they don't because we have multiple side gates and plazas. If we build a chessboard on each side of the bow tie, we would expect entertainment to reach at least 415, but it doesn't. In order to push the bow tie over 420 so it can reach level 3, we could build another high value building like the park cafe, or we could decorate our park with props. There seems to be some confusion online over whether props actually add to a park area's entertainment score. So let's place a few right now and see if it makes a difference. We'll start by enclosing the bow tie in with a park fence, which attaches very nicely to our gates. You may have to move the plazas and chessboard slightly for it to fit. This added only slightly to entertainment, so let's also add a line of rose hedges just inside the fences where Broadway and Park Avenue cross. So how did that affect things? Oh wow, we added almost 100 in entertainment to the bow tie, which is 50 more than we needed to reach level 3. Props, which include trees and shrubs, are super cool, since they add beauty and a ton of entertainment to our parks without adding upkeep costs like buildings do. So don't be afraid to get creative, it really pays off. Speaking of payoffs, let's see the effect our new park has had on land value. Wow. We've more than doubled from the 12 credits per square meter average at the beginning of Part 4 and gained 7 or 8 credits over the course of Part 5. Most of the gain has been downtown, though values have also crept up in Meridian Park and North Market. If we switch over to the Leisure Info view, it clearly identifies our parks as a chief contributor to this increased land value. As we click on each tab, it highlights in purple each type of building that contributes entertainment value. The bow tie lights up when we click on park areas, as does our public library just down Broadway. That's right, public libraries not only serve a useful educational purpose, they also contribute to entertainment, just like parks and unique buildings. Now let's switch to our levels info view and find the answer to questions I raised at the end of part three. Would low numbers of educated sims make it a bad idea to build parks right away? And could an early increase in land value possibly hurt our city's growth? What we see here is great news. More than a quarter of our residential buildings have hit level 2, with a few reaching level 3. More importantly, several commercial zones have even upgraded to level 2, and though we do have a few buildings complaining about not enough educated workers, this problem is not widespread. If we switch over to our education info view, we see this economic improvement has happened thanks to our solid educational system. Watch what happens to all of our new land value when I turn off the schools and the public library. We drop down to right back where we started. Since tax revenues are calculated from land value, this shows that we need both good parks and solid education for a healthy city budget and to get our buildings to level up. Better educated sims not only bring much higher tax revenues from upgraded homes and businesses, but they also create less garbage, saving us money on processing. So again, a more educated sim is a more profitable sim. Now that we've arrived at our fifth milestone of 4200 sims, I have even more great news in our two key takeaways. First, we learned that entertainment is king at creating land value, which leads to substantially higher tax revenues. Public libraries, unique buildings, and especially parks all contribute. Second, we learn that parks do only limited good unless they're coupled with a strong educational system. When we have both, our city's residential and commercial buildings level up, which further improves tax revenues. We might see not enough educated workers pop up from time to time, but the game doesn't go out of its way to penalize us when we substantially increase land value by adding city services and parks. Now let's switch over to our traffic info view for my last bit of great news. It's nowhere near as busy as Coruscant, but we are seeing oranges and reds in our industrial area. Yes, that's right. Our city is now big enough that in part six, we can finally start talking about traffic. After more than two months of complaints about the grid and the lack of roundabouts, it is finally time to witness the firepower of this fully 
armed and operational city plan. Fire at will, Commander!